I'm Steve Marshall, artist and pastor on staff at Willowbrook United Methodist Church, and I'd like to use a very familiar Bible story to talk about how God can help us overcome those tough challenges in our lives. The story is one remembered from our earliest Sunday school days, a story that appeals to children who appreciate the tale of a small boy who defeats the towering armor-clad giant with just a slingshot. Children who live in a world of giants where nearly everyone in authority is bigger and stronger than they are delight at seeing little David give the big bully Goliath what he deserves. Even as we grow older and bigger, we still enjoy seeing the little guy win. We still root for the underdog. But the story of David and Goliath is not just a children's story. It is a story that shows us how we can overcome the Goliaths in our own lives, those obstacles that challenge us and seem insurmountable. But as David overcame the giant Philistine, so we too can, with God's help, overcome impossible odds. The teller of this tale skillfully builds the tension. He gives a detailed description of the huge Goliath and his armaments, all the more to impress us with his size, his strength, and to emphasize the great odds against Israel. This is the problem facing Israel, immense, impossible to overcome. And we are told the reaction of the Israelites immobilizing fear. They were so frightened of Goliath, they couldn't do a thing. What Goliaths do you face? A physical ailment that seems incurable? A relationship that appears nothing can save? Up to your eyes in debt and no hope of ever getting out? Can't find a good paying job? When you look at the problems facing you, do you see an immense Goliath blocking your way? And if you do see a Goliath, what is your reaction? Is it the same as the Israelites? Fear? Inaction? That is the scene when David shows up. Now David, a mere boy, arrives on the scene bringing lunch for his older brothers. He hears Goliath's taunts and insults. Your majesty, David said, this Philistine shouldn't turn us into cowards. I'll go out and fight him myself. You don't have a chance against him, Saul replied. You're only a boy, and he's been a soldier all his life. But David told him, Your Majesty, the Lord has rescued me from the claws of lions and bears, and he will keep me safe from the hands of the Philistine. Refusing Saul's armor and carrying only a sling, David goes out to meet Goliath. Now there are three important lessons to be learned from this story of David and his defeat of the mighty Goliath, lessons we can apply to the Goliaths in our own lives. First, David had a relationship with God. Throughout 1 Samuel, we hear that the Lord was with David. Now that's important to know. All of David's success derives from this relationship. Without it, David has nothing, is nothing. Without a relationship with God, Goliaths stand tall and untouched. You see, King Saul was a great warrior. He had the power and the might to take on Goliath, but we are told that the spirit of the Lord had left Saul. He no longer had the faith that God could or would act on his behalf. Without a relationship with God, without the power of God's Spirit within him, 
the great King Saul was reduced to a whimpering coward. The second thing we learn is that David had trust in the Lord. David told Saul, the Lord has rescued me from the claws of lions and bears, and he will keep me safe from the hands of the Philistine. David trusted the Lord because in that relationship with God, he had experienced times when God's hand had saved him. He could face Goliath because he knew from past experience that God would be with him and would enable him to overcome any obstacle, even the impossible. And that's what it takes to defeat our Goliaths, complete trust in God. Now, when Goliath saw David, he made fun of him. Do you think I'm a dog? Goliath asked. Is that why you've come after me with a stick? He cursed David in the name of the Philistine gods, and he shouted, Come on, when I'm finished with you, I'll feed you to the birds and wild animals. But David answered, You've come out to fight me with a sword and a dagger, but I've come out to fight you in the name of the Lord, all-powerful. He is the God of Israel's army, and you have insulted him too. Today the Lord will help me defeat you. Everybody here will see that the Lord doesn't need swords or spears to save his people. The Lord always wins his battles, and he will help us defeat you. So we see that third, David had confidence in God and in his own abilities. He knew what he could do, and he knew what God could do. Hey, I've killed lions and bears with this sling, and I can kill this giant Philistine as well. And even more importantly, David was willing to invite God into the situation. David made this battle God's battle, and then allowed himself to become God's instrument. How often, when we're facing our own Goliaths, do we invite God in and give the battle over to him? God is there for us if we only seek his help. Well, when Goliath started forward, David ran toward him. He put a rock in his sling and swung the sling around by its straps. And when he let go of one strap, the rock flew out and hit Goliath right on the forehead. It cracked his skull, and he fell face down on the ground. David had defeated Goliath with only a sling and a stone. And so we end this familiar story, the story of a huge, well-armed giant named Goliath and a well-armed but cowardly king named Saul. Into this battle scene comes a third participant. Someone else is moving in to take up the fight. And I'm not talking about little David. I'm talking about God, the God who loves and cares for his people, a God who enters the battle and fights on the side of the underdog to bring victory over impossible odds, a God who is there for you. During this time of lockdowns and isolation and fears of the coronavirus, we face unprecedented challenges physically, emotionally, and spiritually. These are some of our Goliaths. As you face these challenges, remember little David. Invite God into your fight and know that God is with you always. Amen. <laughs>